Anyway, Summit's on the air. What is it? It's basically portable operation from a high location. It's, you know, kind of encourage uh, ham radio in the outdoors, kind of like a, a, a mini expedition. Um, probably all of you have worked field day. This, this is almost like a, a field day. You have a spirit of adventure. And, uh, you know, to, to go to uh, remote um, uh, places. Now, many SOTA sites on summits, hilltops, high points, whatever you want to call them, are also in parks. So it's kind of related to parks on the air. Um, and so although I'm going to emphasize uh, summits on the air with, you know, on HF, I will kind of compare and contrast uh, parks on the air. For example, um, uh, for a good SOTA activation, you need four contacts, four separate uh, people. Uh, it doesn't count if you work them, you know, say a guy on 40 and 20. No, it's, it's one guy. POTA, on the other hand, parks on the air, you got to have uh, 10 contacts. And uh, they could be the, um, you can work a guy on 40, you can work the guy on 20, you can work a guy on 17 meters, and those are three contacts right there. Um, the thing about POTA, and it is very popular, um, it's a lot easier to actually do. You can kind of do it on the spur of the moment. Um, you can just drive into a park, you know, be in your vehicle and uh, start calling CQ POTA and you're on the air. So it's, uh, um, you know, kind of something that's become really uh, pretty popular. Um, but if you like the outdoors and you can hike and play uh, ham radio, you know, doing a SOTA, you know, it's kind of a sense of accomplishment, uh, um, you know, getting to the top and, and operating. And I've always uh, liked uh, hiking, backpacking, map reading, uh, GPS, QRP, and actually looking for uh, wildlife. And you also are going to gain skills uh, for emergency communications because you're going to operate in a portable location. You're going to throw up uh, antennas working on uh uh, a battery. So there is some uh, uh, crossover there. Uh, this particular um, uh, spot here is Sleeping Bear Dunes. It's also, uh, when I did it, it was National Parks on the Air, but this is also a, a POTA. So I could be calling this a soda and a POTA, and I'll just point out a couple things here. Um, uh, my days of sitting on logs and rocks are over. I carry this little uh, portable lightweight chair. Um, hiking poles I always use, you know, gives you a little extra stability. Plus, you can use it to tie off antennas. And what I got here is a uh, NFED uh, dipole, which I'll talk about later. And this is uh, on a bluff um, overlooking uh, um, Lake Michigan. Soda started in 2002 in uh, Britain, the UK, and it became uh, uh, active in the United States in 2007. So it's kind of uh, worldwide. On the other hand, POTA, Parks on the Air, was founded by Jason W3AAX, W3 Alpha Alpha X-Ray, after the successful National Parks on the Air. That was a one-year event, event in 2016, uh, celebrating the 100 years of the National uh, Park Service. So SOTA is not a club, it's not a society or a contest, there's no, do no dues, no membership, except when you uh, log in on the website. You just participate and it's uh, 24 seven and you got both men and women, a lot of husband and wife teams uh, participate. Uh, this particular uh, area here, Lookout Mountain, uh, I did a joint soda. This is Paula, canine IR, who just last month got a, her what they call double mountain goat. Uh, she did 308 activations and I'll explain more about what that is uh, later. But we, we kind of, uh, we hiked up together um, the, the summit was, um, you know, uh, enough space, bunch of radio towers. So we were able to separate and both be on the air at the same time, although we were on, uh, uh, different frequencies. Uh, Paula wrote an article, which is in the references, uh, um, for cwops.org. And I, I got the link to it. And she uh, described SOTA as uh, biathlon for geeks. If you think of biathlon, you know, with the Olympics, somebody has to go out hiking, in the snow, whatever, they're carrying your equipment and then they set up and that's kind of uh, what they do. Um, there's other reasons to, to go to do sodas, to be outdoors, that's to see uh, a wildlife. This uh, critter here, I was uh, driving up to a soda in the Los Padres National Forest, about 70 miles north of Los Angeles. Uh, this guy was in the road. He was walking for a bit. I was concerned I might see cubs, I didn't. He actually laid down in the road. I was delayed for about 30 minutes before he finally left. And I was actually camping. So I had a hope and he did not show up. 
Um, in 2019, I did a SOTA in uh, Custer State Park. And when I was coming down, I was actually a, a friend of mine, his wife uh, knew how to go up there. So she took me up there and on our way down, uh, we had a buffalo right there by uh, her truck. And we had to kind of maneuver to get, get around that thing. Paula, who I showed you earlier one time, uh, up in Wisconsin, uh, she was kind of hunkered down by some bushes on 30 meters W. She saw uh, a pack of about 10 wolves that um, uh, came by. One of the thing I like, things I like about SOTA is I'm going to places I normally uh, would not visit. I've driven to small towns. I've been all over the uh, San Gabriel Mountains here in California, numerous national forests, deserts. Uh, I've done them in the Midwest. Uh, what's interesting in the Midwest is uh, there's a lot more foliage and, you know, sometimes uh, hiking on the path, you, you can't even see the trail and you have to, you know, rely on these blue blazes. Um, this particular uh, one here, I was in uh, the woods in Ohio and the summit was in a state park and it, there was no real path to it. There was like a trail that went around it. At one point I had to figure, well, I know where the summit is. I have it in my GPS and I just hit a waypoint. And then I started walking through the brush till it told me I was right on top of the, um, uh, of the actually on the soda. Um, I've been to the highest points in uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Michigan, Indiana, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Alabama, North Dakota. Here uh, um, is the highest point in Ohio. It was pretty easy to get to. It's kind of on a school campus. Um, one of the things I'll say about soda, I emphasize you can't operate from your vehicle, even though this was kind of a drive up, drove up to a little parking lot. You just walk about, uh, you know, 50 feet, you're at the highest point. Now, I did not sit, uh, you know, nice, convenient bench here. I didn't sit here and operate because other people were showing up. And, you know, you don't you want to be courteous. So I just went off to the side about 40, 50 feet away. There's a little tree. So I was out of uh, um, everybody's way. Um, the highest point, of course, as you all may know, is in. Uh, the lower 48 here is uh, Mount Whitney in California. Uh, I've been up there twice, but this was during my pre-soda days. Um, never activated up there, but it has been activated um, uh, 17 times. So, you know, maybe as a kid, you did a lot of hiking, you were in the Boy Scouts, um, because you could participate in soda by never even activating. You could just be what they call a chaser, or you just work stations uh, from your home QTH. Now, what I'm going to try to do here, and I did try uh, practice with Dan, I'm going to show you a little video clip. It's uh, about a two-minute uh, video clip of an actual SOTA uh, on Mount Hermon, and it was also in, uh, uh, it was also a POTA, Park Center, because it was in the Pike uh, National Forest. Um, this was a trail about uh, 1.2 mile hike with about an 800 foot elevation gain. Um, the, high, the elevation was 9,063 feet. Uh, I was with Steve, WG0AT. He's kind of a legend in soda. He's 80 years old and he lives real close to the trail and he goes up here about once a week kind of for a, a workout. And um, uh, when I did this one, we did it together. This is my 28th state, uh, you know, Colorado. And I just did it uh, um, this past July. Um, the trail we went up to, uh, there were several uh, paragliders. They're carrying your equipment because at the top, um, it's kind of a real broad summit and you're about 2000 feet, uh, above the flatland. So the, uh, you, you will see, um, uh, people jumping off, uh, and riding the thermals down initially on the, the clip, you'll see me, I'll be calling CQ Poda, CQ Soda. I'll be using a KX, uh, two I have sitting in my lap to, uh, again, a wire antenna. And then Steve will be operating. He'll be on uh, CW Morse code. And you'll actually see, you'll hear the code, but you'll see the translation going along the bottom. And if you, you watch and you listen, you'll see that he worked uh, France and um, Spain on 20 meter CW. We didn't, uh, you know, operate at the same time, obviously on the same bands. He was also using a KX2 uh, to a wire antenna. So let me uh, see if we can uh, uh, get this thing going here. I'll just take a uh, second. All right, let's see, we got this. CQ Summits on the air, CQ Parts on the air, Whiskey Alpha 9, Yara Tango, Indian Poly, 
Whiskey Elm Banani, Sierra Tangalia, Summer San Diego, Mark San Diego. Hey, how you doing, Don? NK6A, NK6A, WA9, Sierra Tango, India. Pretty good signal, you're a 5757. I'm going to be here with There's no sound right now, Scott. Scott, there's no sound at all. Okay, uh, I, hopefully you guys were able to see that. Uh, let me get back to uh, presentation here. Yeah, it didn't work. Oh, it didn't. Uh, oh, well, we just killed. Did you see anything? Sort of. We saw it all, but we the CW part, there was no sound. Okay. All right. Well, uh, anyway, that give you an idea of kind of what it's like. And, you know, it's the first time I tried it. We, we practice it. Um, the other thing about Steve is that he's got that call sign, uh, call sign W goat, because he used to take goats with him, uh, that would carry his uh, gear. And Steve was also featured in a, uh, outside magazine published, uh, last year. And there's a link, uh, to that. So before I go any further, I just want to give some, uh, definition, to, you know, the activator, that's the person who goes up to the, uh, the mountaintop also for the park. Um, he's the activator, the chaser, that's the person that, uh, you know, works the activator, the chaser could be at, you know, at his home in a car camp and whatever, uh, you know, if you ever heard the term chasing uh, DX, uh, that's it summit to summit. That's where one person is on one, uh, mountaintop working a person on another one. And usually they're, they're QRP and that's a lot of fun. And the activation zone just means that, um, even though, you know, you don't have to be right at the summit, you can be within 25 meters as long as you're on the same ridge line. For example, if the summit is actually inside a, a fenced area, there's repeaters, you're not expected to climb over fences and trespass. So those are some of the uh, terms. Uh, just mention real quick, you can't just operate any uh, mountaintop. It has to be on a, uh, the soda list and there's thousands of them. And each one has a, um, uh, a uh what they call summit reference so this means it's in california s means it's sierra nevada if it's number one that's probably you know it'd be like something like mount whitney here's wisconsin w9 wi now potas on the other hand they have k numbers uh so that lookout mountain that's when i showed a picture of uh of me and uh, paula k9 ir uh we gave this uh this was our sota what they call sota reference and this was our park number 4338 and so uh, these are some of the other ones. These are the ones that you saw earlier, that picture on the bluff. And then that was uh, here. So uh, there are some awards. In fact, they say uh, soda is, uh, if you look at the uh, main website, that it's an award scheme. But I tell you, I didn't start operating soda for awards. Uh, I just started, because uh, I just enjoyed it. Uh, this is what's called the uh, uh, um, soda sloth. And um, if you, this is a, figure of a sloth this is uh this is made in um they say it's a special cut glass out of scotland the highlands area you know if you think of a sloth a sloth is you know an animal it's lazy just kind of laying around so it's kind of implying you know if you're a chaser and you get enough contacts usually it's about uh um anywhere from uh, about 200 contacts you can get this trophy um 
but the ones that uh, the activators go for is, uh, is the mountain goat. Um, that takes anywhere from about 160 to 200 activations uh, to get what they call a thousand points. And each soda summit has a point vary from one to 10 based on its elevation. Um, but all these, uh, like the highest elevations, you know, like for California, 14,000 feet, that's a, a 10 pointer, but back East, they may only go up to 5,000 feet. So they extrapolate. So it, it kind of evens it out. Um, this is, you know, so this is called a mountain goat trophy, but <laughs> this is not really a mountain goat. It's probably a bighorn sheep, but I don't know if that's what they, uh, um, call them there in, uh, in the UK, uh, for POTA, they got, you can get a lot of certificates there, um, for being an activator, you can get them for, uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, in POTA, they don't call them chasers. They call them hunters. Now, if you've, uh, if, if you've never registered for POTA parks on the air, the first time you register, uh, you, you might have a bunch of certificates because in POTA, you don't, as a, as a hunter or slash chaser, you don't have to log anything. It's up to the activator that logs it. So when you sign in for the first time, you may have been gathering all these points you didn't know about. And all of a sudden you got uh, um, all these uh, uh, certificates. So, you know, what bands and frequencies do you want to use? Um, uh, one of the most popular ones is uh, 20 meters. And uh, can you guys see the top of the screen? That's, it looks like it's cut off on my end. Yes. 20 meters by 14.061. Okay, good. I'm not seeing it. Okay. So essentially you can operate anywhere, uh, sideband or CW, but, uh, you know, you, if you're running QRP, you don't want to be right down there at the low end. So a lot of times around 14.061, 0.62, 0.63, that's where the CW soda operators will go. Same thing with sideband. Uh, you know, you kind of hang out at the high end of the band here, um, just to stay out of the way. With SOTA, I'm sorry, with, with POTA, they're pretty good because their CW operators, they kind of go down around 14.044, 0.42, and because they're running a lot more power. And so they, it's kind of a gentleman's agreement. This here is just kind of a map uh, that gives you an idea of what the propagation was. Uh, Keith KR7 uh, um, RK. Uh, activated uh, near Tucson at about 7,700 feet. And this kind of shows, you know, all the contacts he made all the way from Europe uh, and down South Korea. Now he, he hauled up a, a larger rig. So he was running about a uh, hundred Watts. Um, uh, I'll tell you on, on POTA, you can get some big, big uh, uh, pileups once uh, you get spotted and people who are out there. I'll tell you one tip on the pileups you got so many stations calling you that sometimes what I'll do is I'll say uh, stations stand by. Are there any summit to summit stations on frequency? You kind of stop the pile up and you might work another summit to summit or is there another park to park uh, station on frequency? So that's kind of a tip to uh, slow down the pileups. 40 meters, also a, a very popular band. Again, this is a map is from when Keith operated. He was on a, a down here. He was on a 10 pointer and this is what he worked. And again, uh, the soda operators, uh, they're going to stay at the high end of 40, 72, 87, CW around, uh, you know, at 61. But again, the POTA CW operators will be down around 7.04443. Um, everything, and there's 30 meters, that's one of my uh, favorite bands. I almost always start out there. And of course, 30 meters is only CW. One thing good about uh, the work bands, unlike maybe DX contest sweepstakes and stuff. You can use them for SOTAs and POTAs. Now, I normally don't go out on weekends. I like to be during a week. You know, I'm retired, so I got plenty of time, and you really feel you're out there on alone. You go out on a weekend. I mean, the bands are loaded. Uh, 20, maybe 40, got a contest going on. Uh, but then you can go to the work band, 17 meters, 12 meters, 30 meters, and and uh, make your uh, uh, contacts there. Um, uh, now, as far as uh, uh, logging, both uh, for SOTA, um, both the chasers and the activators have to log their contacts on the SOTA database. Uh, for park operators, uh, only they have to log it. If you're a hunter, you don't have to. It's kind of automatic. Everything's on the honor system. In fact, you can actually, uh, you know, tomorrow morning, get on the air and call CQ Soda, CQ Poda, you know, log the stuff and maybe not even be registered. 
uh, that still counts. I mean, you can you can register a week later, you can register a month later. Uh, when I I didn't get into POTA until February of this year, so I went back and I I had my logs from national parks on the air, which was in 2016. I did 50 activations. I was able to uh, log those and and upload those. And also, you know, the station you work doesn't have to even know that you're on a soda or a POTA. You just uh, you know you work them, you tell them, oh okay, they're not they don't care about it. You just log it and you get in. Now for me, I log by paper. Uh, I don't like, I don't have a smartphone. Um, and, uh, but there are different logging programs. So um, when I get off the hill, I'll walk down. I usually have a place picked out, a picnic table, have a cold uh, 807, and then uh, go over my logs. Uh, then I put them individually. For parks on the air, it's pretty simple, uh, similar. You, you have to have some kind of logging program that has uh, what they call an AD um, IF uh, file. Uh, oh, wrong way here. Uh, these are just some, uh, I'm not going to, you know, read the laundry list, but just give you some facts about, you know, everything. As you can see, uh, 18,000 plus peaks in Alaska. I've activated from there three times. There's very few peaks that actually have a trail. I mean, if you're doing something in Alaska, um, it's like an expedition. Um, you can see one peak in uh, Mississippi, none, Florida, Kansas, Louisiana, or uh, Rhode Island. And many of the activators, uh, they also are chasers. But sometimes you're living in a condo, you can't uh, put out any antennas, restrictions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you could still participate by um, uh, being uh, uh, just a chaser. I say again, uh, an activator. For me, since 2014, I've activated 253 uh, mountaintops, hilltops in 30 different states to include Hawaii and uh, Alaska. And I did two SOTAs in Ireland. As far as being a chaser, uh, I've worked over 3,500 activators um, from both my home QTH here in Los Angeles. And I have a cottage in uh, Northern Wisconsin. Now, when you're, uh, when you're operating as an activator, you're like a net control. You're in charge, you're like a train uh, uh, engineer driving everything. If you want to take a break, you can take a break. If I, somebody works me and I know the person, I might chat for uh, uh, a little bit because um, it's not a contest. I mean, it's up to you. My, the, my average activation is about one uh, to one and a half hours on a peak. And you'll find out that many activators uh, are in their 60s or older. Um, I just turned 70 and, you know, I'm still going out there. And, you know, there are some hills where, you know, you might want to, you know, use specialized equipment, but it's very rare uh, you do that. Um, on some days I've done activations where uh, I spend three hours on a peak that has some uh, uh, really nice view. Uh, view. There are some activators that might do uh, uh, four to five uh, activations a day, and um, you know, and you can you can use uh, you can do this uh, a two meter handheld on FM uh, uh, Bob uh, uh, K zero NR on November 9th. Uh, he gave a presentation here with Rat Pack, and it's now on YouTube all about uh, VHF. And he calls uh, taking a, a two meter radio, uh, it's taking a well, taking a two meter radio on a hike, and you just make four contacts on FM, and you've done a good activation. Some of the trail runners they'll go up, make four or five activation, uh, four or five contacts, go down, run to a another one. I operate both CW and sideband, um, and I probably over half of most contacts are in CW. A lot of people start out on sideband, they don't know CW, but then they take various courses and stuff, and uh, uh, get into it. Here, this is actually my uh, niece's uh, son. He, he he came out to LA from Chicago. He was an Eagle, going for his Eagle Scout. This is Mount Baden-Powell, um, you know, where the um, the founder of the Boy Scouts, uh, William Baden-Powell, uh, this is Liam, and he, he passed his tech license, and this is my father, my late father, and his great-grandfather's uh, uh, call sign, and nine uh, MCL. I usually spend about 15 minutes on uh, each band before I change frequency because there's a lot of chasers looking for you. Um, so instead of just using 20 where you have a, a, lo a long skip range, I'll do uh, 30, 20, uh, or 30, 40, uh, sometimes even 60 meters for the real close in contacts. Uh, you know, no special equipment is, is required, whatever you want to carry, you know, it's just based on uh, the weight in your pack. As for me, uh, now I I probably don't hike more than three miles one way. Uh, I got bad knees from years of running. 
and I try to stay uh, no more than a thousand foot uh, elevation gain. Uh, this particular one here was in Ireland. Um, it was on the, uh, the West Coast, Dingle. Uh, was the name of the, the town. We had an overnight stay in a motel. I could see from the motel uh, East Tower. I knew it was a soda site. So how do I get there? Uh, walked to town, <laughs> rented a bicycle, rode the bike on about a mile on paved road, got on a, a little country lane to this little kiosk on private property. And uh, I paid uh, um, the, I think you paid one or two euros to the, the farmer to hike on their property. And this is right before I started the hike. And that's uh, East Tower up there. For a good contact soda, you just got to exchange a signal report and a reference number that you're on. Um, but you don't always have to give the reference number, you know, like the W6 slash SN. Just say it occasionally. People can look it up when they see you're spotted. Uh, for POTA, for the park, uh, you give the, a signal report, what state you're in, and usually your K number. Because the K number is not going to tell you what state you're in, but a soda reference number uh, uh, would. One thing about soda is you are going to get honest signal reports. <clears throat> if you're a 229, you're going to get a 229. If you're a 3-3 three, three on sideband, you'll get a 3-3. Three, three. You know, a lot of times DX contests, you work at DX station, everybody's 5-9. Uh, you're, you're not going to see that. One thing I also want to mention is that when you are activating, whether it's a park or a, a mountaintop, is give your call sign often. Sometimes somebody will get a pileup going, especially on parks, and they're just taking station after station. Somebody new comes on frequency, you're listening. Well, who is the guy? Who is the guy? I give my call sign usually every other time. Uh, sometimes I might go three or four contacts, but I routinely give my calls, especially on CW, because somebody could be spotted uh, two people, one guy in the West Coast, one guy in the East Coast, they're both on the same frequency, they're not hearing each other. And if they keep calling and calling, I'm not giving a call sign, uh, you won't know who they are. As I mentioned, uh, and I'm not going to go into the VHF part, but uh, you can use a handheld. I always take, I take two handhelds with me. A lot of people will use the 146.52, uh, 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 the calling frequency. But, uh, you know, when you're in an urban area like Los Angeles, you don't want to you know, uh, dominate it. If you're on a hilltop and you're running a, a little handheld like this, uh, a mountain time and you're overlooking, you know, this LA basin and you decide to stay on five, two for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I've heard people on there for 45 minutes. I mean, you dominate the frequency. Nobody else can use the national calling frequency it gives a bad name to soda in my opinion. So a lot of people, uh, they go to other simplex channels. Um, this is a popular one here called the adventure frequency. Or you could just say CQ Soda listening 146.58. You know, again, you set uh, uh, good um, operating uh, habits. Um, uh, this is uh, this is a great book. This is uh, Bob. Again, he's the one that gave the uh, presentation on November 9th, and it is on YouTube. This is a great book for brand new hams. Uh, a lot, how to operate VHF, the, the customs on a repeater, you know, protocol, um, sideband, and it's really... The last 60 pages uh, talk about soda. So uh, any new operator, I, I really urge them to, you know, get this book. They'll co cost about uh, $20 or so. And even Bob, uh, he uses what he talks about, the three-minute rule on 5-2 uh, simplex. So um, uh, I talked about, uh, uh, you know, there are drive-up summits where you could drive up and you know, not walk that far. This is this is the highest point in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's about 19, 1,980 feet. It's worth eight points. You know, I mentioned you know in California, one thousand nine hundred eighty feet would be one point. So anyway, um, you know, drove up to this one, just hiked up. Uh, here I'm using an FT817, uh, one of these bigger gel cell batteries, which I don't use anymore, and. Uh, um, I was the first one to activate Mount Arvon, so I got what they call bragging rights. If you go on, the, there's a separate page for Mount Arvon. It will have um, my, uh, I was the one who, who did it. For, um, for uh, parks on the air, I mean, you can operate in your vehicle. You can just, uh, all you got to do is be within the state or the national park boundary. Uh, this includes national forests. And uh, you could just sit in your vehicle or go to, uh, you know, take your girl out to uh, um, a picnic table. Here, um, I was up in, uh, I was working or volunteering at an animal shelter in southwest Utah in April. Spent a week there. 
And over five days, I activated 13 parks on the air and uh, just using uh, inside the car. And this is a Hustler vertical uh, on, the, on the vehicle. And I switched out between 20 and uh, 40. This here is Chavez. And you can see he's real happy. He's one of the dogs I took on a quote outing. I did let him walk for do his thing. So he was real happy to be uh, sitting in there watching. Um, uh, in July, I was up in Fresno again, uh, you know, working in an animal shelter and I was going to come home. And again, kind of, uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of planning. I'm driving back from Fresno about uh, 250 miles North of Los Angeles. I found two uh, parks off the freeway, Pixie uh, National uh, Wildlife Refuge and the uh, Colonel Asworth uh, State Historical Park. Again, I just pulled in the parks with, with the vehicle here and just started calling CQ uh, POTA. Um, here's uh, uh, coming back from the Yuma, Arizona Ham Fest earlier this year. I went to uh, uh, the Heber uh, Dune State Vehicle Recreation Area, just a couple miles north of the border. Here, I actually was set up on a picnic table. I had this hitch on the back and this had a mast that went up about uh, 25 feet. And I had a wire uh, um, coming back to me. I made like 35 contacts in an hour, just running 75 watts. And then after I packed up here, headed north, coming back to California. And I stopped at the uh, Sunny Bono Salton Sea National Wildlife Refuge. And again, knocked out another uh, soda. I say again, knocked out another uh, parks on here. By the way, when I'm in California, I use a club called Whiskey Alpha 6 Lima Echo WA6LE. And both soda and poda, you can use a club call, you can use somebody else's call, but you still get credit for the points because when you you log in, you're using your uh, your old uh, call sign. Talk about summit to summit. That's where your uh, you know your working activators are on other peaks. Um, you can do it on two meters or uh, FM. One time uh, I was in, again, the Las Padres National Forest. I was about 7,200 feet. I just set up, uh, sat down in my chair, and I heard uh, KX6A, who was uh, at 12,837 feet in the Eastern Sierras, 123 miles away. So I worked him. Uh, and uh, what was nice is I was his, uh, he was on his mountain goat activation. So I had a chance to work him. One time I was in Georgia. Uh, Northeast Georgia at 3,600 feet. I walked, I worked a guy on 30 meters. I was running 10 watts and uh, he was in Washington state. That was 2,098 miles. My longest one is when I was in Maui. And I have a picture of that later. Uh, 20 meter CW, 3,226 miles to a soda activator uh, on a peak in Colorado. Now I'm just gonna kind of go over this real quick. Uh, because I could talk a lot about this, but this is how you kind of, uh, where all the soda stuff act takes place. Uh, this is called Soda Watch, and I have an area for spots and alerts, and an alert is where you kind of give a heads up, you're going to be on the air, for example, um, uh, uh, these different stations, and again, this is from January, uh, and I'll show you another page. The other thing about uh, the uh, on this page, they have a drop-down menu, where you can go to search summits, uh, this is where you get on the database, mapping and things like that. So this is kind of the first page on the alert, but then I'll show you uh, the second page is when I, uh, this is the same, I put alerts in. In other words, you can put alert in two weeks ahead of time, one week ahead of time, the night before, or you don't even need an alert. But if you do put an alert in, what this is kind of gives a heads up, lets people know you're going to be operating. So on this particular day and everything is in Zulu time, 1730, I said I was going to be on this peak here, CT140, that's Jupiter Mountain. And I put a little message in. I'm always on APRS. People can track me in the vehicle. And I say that I'm going to, while I'm driving, I'll be on the calling frequency once I get on top, 146.58. And then I, uh, some people will put the exact frequencies they're going to be on, but you don't know that. Uh, I put the bands. Uh, in this particular case, I was going to activate two sodas in one day. So the first one I estimated 1730 Zulu, which would have been about 1030. And the second one, uh, I figured I'd be there by 230. I can say this, I'm never on time. It doesn't matter. You don't really need the alert. Um, so I talked about, uh, here is um, uh, spots. A spot is where you actually are uh, at at the time. Uh, and this is where people will look, look for you and uh, 
for example, you know, right here, there's uh, KE5AKL. Uh, as of 2018, he's on CW. He's down a little bit lower. Um, so, you know, if you come on, you see this spot, see if he's still there. Well, in his case, uh, he changed. So he started at 2018. Uh, he started on 20 CW, 2038, he went up to uh, uh, 40 meters. Um, so I talk about spots. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, if you put an alert um, and uh, on the alert page, and then when you start operating, there's a system called Reverse Beacon Network, only works for CW, it will automatically spot you. I use uh, APRS to spot myself. Um, you know, if, if you're at a, on top of, and you got a smartphone, you can hit the internet, you got four or 5g coverage, you can spot yourself. You can ask a chaser station or other ways to, uh, uh, spot yourself and you want to get spotted, uh, because that's how people are going to be able to, uh, find you. Okay. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, again, this is when I, uh, you saw my alerts and, uh, here I was on Jupiter mountain. And I, first thing I do is when I get up there, I get my handheld, I put a spot out. Uh, activate our uh, chasers know I'm up there and I might put a call out uh, again on the adventure frequency. In the meantime, I'm setting up my stuff. So at what time I was there at uh, two minutes past uh, and then it, by almost uh, 40 minutes later, I finally started on uh, uh, 30 meter CW and uh, and a couple of times I had to adjust. So that's essentially how the spot works for POTA. They have a similar system. Uh, they call it schedule activations. They don't call it alerts. And here you can actually put a couple a day range that you're going to be on the air. Uh, and then you got your K number for POTA spots. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, again, these are, they're on the air right now. Uh, but if and you could, how last time they were called and if somebody works you on a, a POTA, you know, the hunter, they may just click on respot and you're automatically respotted. So that's how the spots work. Huh. Another important thing about SOTA watch is each uh, uh, summit has its own information page, gives you information about latitude, longitude, you know, the elevation, uh, different soda activity. But the most important part is what they call the resources. And if you're going to go to a place you've never been before, you just kind of look at all these different uh, notes, you know, here's uh, directions. People, have, they got pictures. So it kind of really uh, helps you, you know, plan uh, your SOTA. And sometimes there's other places to... Uh, uh, you know, like peak bag, uh, peak bag or other, uh, you know, different outdoor websites um, will show you, give you information. And usually, you know, if you're the first time to activate something, you know, then you might put uh, something down there as uh, directions and things like that. So I've talked about equipment a little bit here. This is, uh, this is my very, this is my second uh, activation. Um, this is Lucille Peak. It's in the Mojave Desert. Um, uh, if any of you in California have heard the Baker to Vegas race. So, uh, I, I kind of researched this one. I drove out on this road and you drove off road and I parked right down below this, but I'm looking right up at it. There's no trail. A lot of desert peaks don't have them, but I had a contour map. I had my compass and GPS. So I basically knew how to hike around to get up here. This is a, a buddy pole, by the way, uh, I was using it at the time. I don't really use them anymore because they are, they are kind of heavy. Here's the equipment again. Uh, again, the FT817, uh, the tuner, uh, I think I had the battery uh, in here. Uh, here's some other equipment uh, I have. This is the Elecraft uh, KX3. Um, has I, These are options, a heat sink here. Um, uh, runs up to about 10 watts. So I can get a little bit more out of it. You got to use an external battery. This radio actually belongs to my wife, uh, Carla. KB6 LAS, Kilo Bravo 6, Los Angeles Sweetheart. That's her original call from the FCC. And, you know, people say the government screws you over, but obviously they did good for her. Yeah, this uh, this here to KX3 was a uh, uh, birthday gift that I got for her, and she's nice enough to let me uh, use it. Um, here's the KX2, a little bit smaller. I use this if I'm traveling. It, it fits real nice uh, into carry-on luggage. The battery is internal. Uh, the paddle fits right on here. Um, and again, uh, uh, this belongs to my wife. I think it was an anniversary present that I, uh, I got for her. Um, here's, uh, show you again, a little bit on uh, antennas and things. Um, this is an end fed dipole that, uh, it goes up to like a, a bush and a tree. And again, it comes down here. I got the, uh, hiking stick. There's a little, uh, um, 
a matching uh, coil here, and this just goes right down to the gear. This is uh, Mount Ojibwe. It's an Isle Royale National Park. It's a real remote uh, national park in Lake Superior. Uh, this is Canada, way off in the uh, landmass. It took me, this was a nine mile hike. Um, Isle Royale is about 45 miles long. We were at the eastern end. I took a boat. I hired a boat to take me about five miles. And then I hiked up to the uh, uh, tower, did the soda, and I walked uh, all the way back. Um, uh, here, here is just, again, some of the, uh, some of the equipment. Uh, these are end-fed dipoles. These are my favorite. The reason being, is you, you just throw one end up into a tree, have the other end come down, maybe on another tree, maybe on a bush, maybe on your hiking pole. These I use for POTA because they could take 100 watts. Uh, this one here, a little bit smaller, uh, will run uh, uh, 20, uh, 30, 20, uh, 40, and even uh, 60 meters has a little... Uh, lead that goes in and out of here. Uh, this is kind of a random wire. Uh, it's only 28 feet long. I could attach this to a tree or a mast. And here's another one. Usually I take uh, two antennas with me because I don't, if something goes wrong with one. Um, uh, here's my launching system. Basically, I have a, a plastic bag. I kind of make it look like a bucket. I just feed uh, uh parachute cord in there. Got a, a bag here, fill it with rocks, and just throw it over a tree. I can usually get uh, get it up about 30 feet. Now, actually, I have a patent on this. This is called the STI Flyer. Um, it, uh, I have a special today, $59.95, plus shipping and handling. If you want the rocks, it's $10 extra. Uh, Tom, I say again, Dan, our K7REX host, has already ordered two of them with the rocks. Okay, uh, here's the verticals. Uh, you saw the uh, um, Hustler verticals. Uh, they call them resonators. Here's the mass. I have a mag mount on top of the Jeep. Here's for 40, here's for 20. This is a really nice, uh, uh, almost a full-size vertical you can put together. I used this when I went to um, uh, uh, Ireland. They don't make these anymore, uh, HFP, but sometimes you get one used. Here's another vertical. Uh, the Outbacker. Here's a small one by Elecraft called the AX3. I use that in Hawaii and uh, worked real well from uh, Maui. Um, this is a popular one. I, I, I haven't used it. It's called the Wolf River Coil Vertical. Very popular uh, with uh, uh, parks on the air people. And again, every, every um, vertical is going to have some kind of radial or uh, counterpoise system. And here's some of the other stuff that uh, you would want. Um, let's say you go up to a place and it has no trees. And then you're either going to put up a vertical or you could take a mast. This is like a real lightweight, about a 15 foot mast. Uh, it's from Soda Beams and it's on the re equipment page. Or you can use, a lot of people get these uh, kind of uh, carbon, uh, uh, carbonite uh, cra crappy or crappie fishing poles and use them. This is a larger mass. This was the one on the back of the Jeep. Actually, it broke. Uh, I had too much strain on there, but I, with a little bit of tape. Um, I use uh, RG174 coax. Even though it's thin coax, you hey, you're only running five watts, 10 watts. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. I carry a uh, 15 foot length and a 25 foot length because you don't know how you're going to set it up. Uh, and I've had it where for some reason, one length isn't working. You know, I hiked two, three miles up the hill, I have a second. Okay, obviously you want a compass with you. I always take a GPS. Um, of course, if you want CW keys, um, this is by White Rook and that this strap, you can strap it on your leg. Uh, this one's kind of an interesting one. It's called a Puji key. I haven't used it yet, um, but this would work good for if you're operating a POTA inside your uh, vehicle. Uh, again, batteries, you know, that's important. You know, I showed you this one and you can get these for, you know, 15, 20 bucks, but it weighs about five pounds. This one, uh, you know, this is probably about a, I don't know, almost a four amp hour. Here's the same thing, half the weight, but it costs a little bit more. Uh, this is what I use for the KX3. Uh, this is the internal battery and a KX2. And this, this is a larger one. This is a 15 amp hour LiPo battery. You probably wouldn't be taking this up to a, uh, a mountaintop, but if you're doing a a POTA, a parks on the air, and you want to set up a picnic table, that would work uh, pretty good for you. Um, uh, here is um, when I was in uh, Mount Haleakala, uh, Mount Haleaka National Park. And again, here, you know, the KX2, here's that uh, AX3 vertical, you know, and again, I mentioned uh, over 3,000 miles. I worked a guy with this. Um, 
Uh, and this was kind of a drive up, you know, it was a parking lot, you just went up there. Now I use headphones uh, first off because you want to hear better, but you don't bother people because people are walking by and you kind of stay out of the way because people are coming up here to see this. And uh, so that's uh, uh, from there. Uh, um, and the, this Mount Haleaka uh, has been activated like 37 times. There have some been a couple of activators that have gone to the bigger ones, Mauna Loa at 13,677 feet or uh, Mauna Kea. And that's kind of a regular adventure. I'll just throw this out there, Wilderness Protocol. This is not my invention. AWRL kind of came up with this uh, quite a few years ago. And basically, if you're in the back country, and you don't have repeater coverage, you can't get into uh, a cell phone, something happens to you, what are you gonna do? You're probably gonna put out some kind of a mayday call on your probably 5-2 simplex. But if you if you get on there continuously, you're gonna burn out your battery. So what this is, is kind of a battery saving thing. You know, from 0700 to 2200, for a five minute window, you get on there and you call mayday, mayday, mayday. And, uh, uh, you know, and see if anybody can find you, then you you turn off, wait another three hours. If people are, if you have a search team looking for you uh, and they know you have two meters, and a lot of times these SAR teams, search and rescue, they have hams and they know you got the wilderness protocol that can help. Also, what you want to do is if you're in the back country yourself, uh, you know, during that window, every five minutes, just put a call out or listen, you may hear somebody. My pre-soda days did a lot of backpacking. More than one occasion, I'm in the Sierra Nevadas, way up on a ridge line. I get on 5-2 simplex in that five-minute window, put a call out, uh, CQ, anybody around, work some backpackers on another ridge line. So it kind of works uh, uh, both ways. Um, this is uh, kind of a hiking plan. You know, if you're going to go to a, most soda operators will go by themselves. This is kind of a, a longer one, but basically you put information in there, where you're going, uh, uh, you know, what your vehicle is, a uh, license plate, and you check off all the equipment you got. Um, there's a second page where you might actually sketch out your map and you put information down here. The idea is, is that whoever you leave this with, uh, your significant other, your XYL, is that they can, they can uh, fax this, send it to any sheriff's department if you don't show up. Um, you don't need it all the time, but, uh, you know, for some, I, I used to use it when I was going for some really uh, remote ones that weren't on a regular trail, but obviously you always want to tell people, uh, where you're at. Uh, again, this is just, uh, just to say a little bit about being in the outdoors. You can Google, uh, the 10 essentials, you know, just a lot of it, common sense stuff. Uh, uh, number 10 here, fire, you know, you're probably not going to be lighting a fire in, in, in California. I had number 11, uh, whistle, very important. If you fall out and hurt yourself, or you're off the trail. How, how long can you yell, yell, yell? I mean, you, you blow the whistle. Uh, so, uh, and you can also use that to let bears or other critters, uh, uh, know. Um, so, uh, with the, um, uh, uh, Wilderness protocol, you know, knowing about 5-2 simplex and if search and rescue knows you have it. Uh, I use APRS where you could you know, locate somebody. I, I have a list, I call it a go-by where my wife can go on the APRS.fi website, see where I was spotted. She she can go on the Soda Watch page and see if I was spotted. That means I got up to the to hilltop. Um, and then maybe, you know, if you're really in remote hiking, you might have some kind of locator system. So, um, you know, people can find you if, if necessary. And I always assume that if something happens to search and rescue is not going to get you that day. So you want to have, you know, I got a couple extra things like extra water, got like a little bivy sack, something that I can, uh, uh, spend a night on the mountain. Again, just some uh, basic operating tips. Uh, you know, before you go out, uh, you might be nice where you're at, but double check, is there wind and rain? Are you going to be able to get there? Um, I always look to verify, did someone else put an alert out? Um, because it's it's kind of a bad custom where if you just, uh, you know, you show up and somebody else put an alert there. I mean, you, you could be there, but sometimes the summits are so crowded. One time there were two guys uh, on a mountaintop uh, not too far from here. They're calling CQ Soda. One guy's calling CQ Soda on sideband. The other guy says, Summit to Summit. Okay, Summit to Summit, go ahead. You know, oh, you're 59. Well, you're 592, pretty strong. Where are you at? I'm on CT 158. Well, so am I. So they, they were separated so much, they didn't know each other was there. 
One thing I always do, you're hiking up a trail, turn around, and look behind you. You're going to come down that same trail and it's nice to, to get a visual. Um, you know, if you're a chaser calling a pileup, just call one time. You don't have to keep stepping on people, stepping on people. Sometimes you can tailgate somebody, talk about giving your call sign off. And, and uh, if somebody yells out summit to summit, everybody stands by and lets the two QRP uh, stations uh, uh, work each other. Again, these are some of the SOTA resources. They're on the, the handouts. You don't have to worry about picking these up. These are some great videos. Uh, uh, this is Jerry, KG6 Hotel, Quebec Delta. He just became a silent key in September. Great guy. Uh, he was a uh, lieutenant with the Costa Mesa Police Department. He has excellent, really good uh, soda video. So uh, if you Google his name, uh, some of them are professionally done to music. Uh, so, uh, and he also has a, a nice little 11 minute video talking about um, the um, uh wilderness protocol again these are some of the uh resources for park shine there's a lot of stuff out there more so than i even had and again there's some good uh youtubes there so a lot of since a lot of soda operators go by themselves a lot of times they'll take dogs with them and they'll take their pets their canines and actually on one of the soda reflectors there's like over 100 pictures so um uh to, to if you want to you know, take one of your uh, uh critters there with you so uh Anyway, if you look right now, in fact, uh, I have another computer going here and uh, I'm looking at spots and uh, let me see. Well, the last spot was uh, about an hour ago. Uh, a guy was in Oregon. Um, let me let me refresh this. So um, again, I'm looking at our computer. Yep. But uh, looking at alerts uh, for tomorrow, um, they started at 0830 Zulu uh Denmark so get early in the morning so anyway um again you don't have to log the contacts right away you can do it later and a good way to kind of get started is start acting as a chaser or a hunter start working these stations so uh anyway that's all I have uh, if there's any questions uh, I guess Dan um uh, go ahead and take it away with that all right um why well, I'm getting things going here Barry what you got there in chat Chat is quiet. Someone said a three eighth inch chain link works great as a throw weight for getting the lines into trees. Uh, say again, what was that? A three eighth inch chain link. Okay. And say yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of you know some some a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, you know, um, whatever get, gets it up there for you. Of course, you know if you're on a if you're working a park. And, you know, you can have your gear right there with you um, and you want to put a, something up, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, like an air, a bow, like a bow and arrow or slingshot or something like that. Or there's, there's some uh, air gun that also can stick them up pretty high. But a lot of times, you know, you don't you may not want to mess around too long. You, a lot of times you want to just get on the air. Uh, so I find it just uh, get that end fed dipole up there. OK, do you want to uh, lower your desk up there, Aubrey? I was saying, again, me? Yes, please. I mean, lower, lower it down. Yeah, yeah. Stop sharing your screen. Oh, 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 got it, got it. All right. There. There we go. All right. See people, and I should see people, and we're all doing great. <laughs> yeah, I see my neighbors on here. Hi, John. He's just a couple of doors down, so. And uh, see so hands up. It's been a really good presentation. I appreciate it. Now, if you go to chat, you'll see that I deposited four, well, yeah, four different uh, PDFs. That's uh, information that uh, uh, Scott has uh, given us tonight, and plus this, this particular uh, uh, presentation. So you want to go on the chat and download those for yourselves. There you'll have the all the links and everything about this of course it'll be available uh through our normal thing when we post it on uh, on youtube and other places but for right now anybody that you know you could down you can download that stuff right now uh yeah i want to make a comment uh barry mentioned that the highest point in florida is 50 feet um and so that they have to have what they call a prominence of the of the mound, the hilltop, the high point has to rise about 300 feet. Uh, 
so that's what they call prominence. That's why even though Florida has a high point, it's not considered a SOTA. And I see somebody <laughs> wrote a lot. There you're out of luck. Yeah. I know. Okay, and I see somebody wrote uh, a lot about uh, Idaho. And yeah, there are, there, it's, you know, there's not that many people do sodas up there, but there are a couple people that, that are up there. So, um, all right. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that, uh, well, that's it. I are there any other comments out there? Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And to you yes. as well. Yes. Eat lots of turkey, take a big long nap and get on, and then get on the air. <laughs>